Satan, faith in the king Israel united in Christ who we be, be, be. Wherever our people be gathered You know that we bringing this heat Scripture on scripture, we call that a precept We making it plain for our people to see See, see, I saw on your internet Not just your internet on your TV Radio stations compelling our nation To wake up and change and come out of sleep Sleep, sleep, sleep in America We are not scared of you, we are prepared for you Puppets so back with a vengeance He saw you gon' get it, you know what you did to us Israel, punch it, sing! Israel, son of God! Who's the king? Who's the king? Who's the king? Numbers chapter 1, verse 18. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. Right. And they declared their pedigrees. So they determined their pedigrees. I explained to you their pedigree is what? The bloodline. The bloodline, right? After their family. After their family, right? By the house of their father. By the house of their father. The father of the sheep. You are who your father is. That's what I wanted. Okay. America told you something different, right? We're going to tell you what, what God says. Right. Okay. You understand? Yeah. All right, do you see? Do you see yourself here on the sign? All right. Judah. Judah. Right? Okay. Do you know the history? You know your history? You know about slavery? Okay. Do you know that that's also written in the Bible? Do you know? Okay. Let me bring it out to you, give you a better understanding. Let me go to Deuteronomy 28. Let's start with 15. Bring it out. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. Okay, this is God speaking to his children, okay? His children is on the sign right here. You are his children. Okay, go on. But they shall come to pass. That means it shall happen. And thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. God said that if you don't listen to him, something was going to happen to you. To observe, to do all his commandments right. and his statutes. Right. Which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. You understand that? Curses? Curses the good thing or bad thing? Bad thing. Okay. Now let me go to 68. I'm gonna give you something that you want that you just said you wanted that you were familiar with. Let me go to 68. Bring it out! Look at Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Okay. According to the Bible, we're gonna give you the understanding of what Egypt means. Hold on a second, let me get uh, Exodus 20 and 2. To give you a better understanding when I bring the rest of that script out to you. The book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 2. Now we're giving the understanding of what Egypt means. Okay? I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So what does Egypt mean? According to that script? Say it again. Okay, repeat it. I am the Lord thy God, which has brought thee out of the land of Egypt, right. out of the house of bondage. So Egypt means? Out of the house of bondage. Egypt would, what? It's what? The house of bondage. It's the house of bondage, right? Slavery, right? Slavery. All right, let's go back to 68. Now. Bring it out. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So God said he will bring you back into Egypt again, bondage with ships. Okay, read on. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. By the way I tell you, you're going to go. Okay. Thou shalt see it no more again. You know? And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. What happened when you when your people got off the slave ships? What happened? What happened to us when we got off the slave ships? Freedom. 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 And there ye shall be sold unto your enemy for bond men and bond women. That slave men and slave women. That's right. Is that what happened to us when we came up with shit? You want to understand that? Look at the sign down here. The sign right here. Is that not your people? Okay, that's recorded in the Bible. Right. It's ready for you. That's right. Okay? There's something, there's a lot, this nation just, it keeps a lot of things from you. It keeps the truth from you from knowing who you are. You was given, you was given these names on this side, and 
And it's captivity right here, right now. But God gave you these names. Right. That's right. That's these are your biblical names. Your true names before you were put into bondage. Bring it up. You understand? Okay, according to, and, and these people are, are God's only children on, on the face of the earth. Right. You understand? Let me prove that for you. Let me get Joel 2.27. We're going to explain according to the scripture. We're not going to speak our words to you. We're going to tell you what the Bible has always been there. But during slavery, this was taken from us, right? Okay. But when, we, when it was given back to us, how was it given back to us? Now remember, in, in times past, when, when the Bible was taken from us, we were being killed for reading, for reading anything. Right? So when it was given back to us, it was given back to us in another doctrine. Not the way it's written. Okay? And when it came back to us, it came back to us with this image. With this image came a doctrine. The doctrine that everyone knows and lives off of today. That's not in the Bible. Right. You understand? Okay, read on. Book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 7. Bring it up. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. So God is explaining to you where he's at. Go on. And that I am the Lord your God. He says he's the Lord your God. Your God. Go on. And none else. And none else. Did I say that? We're reading out of the Bible, right? King James, right? Okay. Let me get a uh, screen. Now you would understand that you can lie to you. You are the greatest people on this earth. That's right. Because you sinned against your father, your God, he put you in a lower state and put those that are below you, above you. Right. Right. This is the curse that he put upon his children. Right. Get out. We've been going through this for hundreds of years. Right. That's right. Okay. The book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 1. Bring it out! Hear this word that the Lord has spoken unto Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel. So God is speaking to Israel, right? His children, right? Okay. Against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. God said, I only know you. That's right. You so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. You only have I known. Right. 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 I've created all things, God said, but you, he only knows. Right. 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 Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Do you understand that? He said he will punish you for your for your iniquities, your sins against him. Okay? Bring it all up. the nations can't sin against him. Only you can. Right. Lord will give it only to you. Let me get up Psalm 147, 19. Bring it out! Bring it out! So, chapter 147, verse 19. He shows his word unto Jacob. Jacob, Jacob's name was changed. Jacob had 12 sons. He got these 12 sons here, right here. He's speaking to these 12 children, okay? Go on. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Go on. He had not dealt so with any nation. See, that just explains that God only gave laws to you. Right. He didn't give it to anyone else. Right. The nations are free to do what they want to do. But you, you belong to God. That's you right. understand? And this, God deals with us this way as father as with sons. Look at that up, Deuteronomy 85. Bring it up! Get out! The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verse 5. Thou shalt also consider in thine heart. Consider in your heart. In your heart. Okay? That as a man chastened his son. Just like God deals, just like a, a dad today would deal with their father, their up son, but their son is disobedient to them, what would happen? They get that punishment, right? Okay, go on. So the Lord that God chastened thee. You understand that? God deals with us as good sons. You read that one more time? Thou shalt also consider in thine heart. Consider, okay? That. As a man chastened his son. Just like a man would chastise his son for their disobedience and, 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 they, and yeah, their disobedience to, to, their, to their father, right? Go on. So the Lord thy God so just thy God chastened thee. He also punishes you. That's right. For what you do wrong. But right. he is your father, your God. Right. I know. You understand? But we were taught here today not to obey God. You understand that? The Bible was taken away from you. You don't know nothing that's written in this Bible. Why? It was taken away from us, right? And when it was given back to us in these churches, was it given to us the way you're reading it today? No. Why is that? Right, you understand that, right? So we are in sin today. Let me give you what sin, do you understand what sin is? You know what sin is? What, what, what is sin? Sin is like when you just 
just obey God. When you just obey God, good. Let's get that in the Bible. Right. You are not doing what God commands. Right. And for that, that is sin. Look at sin. The book of 1 John, chapter 3, verse 4. Whoso committed sin transgresses also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. So according to the Bible, sin is breaking God's laws, statutes, and commandments. Right. God is a God of order, and he gave order to us. And we are disobeying him today. That's right. The book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 8. We're going to bring out another law to you. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it home. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Now if you look at your calendar today, you see that the seventh day falls on Saturday. It is not Sunday. And the Lord said to keep it holy. How are we to keep this, this commandment holy? In it, thou shalt, do, thou shalt not do any work. So the Lord says not to do any work on this holy day, which is the seventh day. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy ma maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gate. So he's explaining your whole household are to relax on the Sabbath day. Now let me give you other laws, let me give you other instructions about the Sabbath day. Exodus chapter 16, verse 23. And he said unto them, This is that which the Lord has said. Tomorrow is the rest of the Holy Sabbath. And he's speaking of the Sabbath day. Tomorrow is the rest of the Holy Sabbath unto the Lord, unto the Lord. Bake that which ye will bake today. Prepare your food that you're going to prepare now before the Sabbath. And see that which ye which ye will see. And that which you made it over, lay up for you to be kept until the morning. So you should make a double portion of your meal before the Sabbath, so that you can hold the rest of the until the morning, as the scripture said. Here's another instruction on the, uh, about the Sabbath day. Exodus chapter 35, verse 2. Six days shall work be done, but on the seventh day there shall be there shall be to you an holy day, a Sabbath of rest to the Lord. Whosoever doeth work, their end shall be put to death. Verse 3. Ye shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations upon the seventh day. So the Lord commanded that we do not kindle any fire on the Sabbath day. That further explains that you are to prepare over that you need to prepare the night before the Sabbath. On the Sabbath, you are not to do any work. You are to rest. And that's, that's including cooking. There is no kindling of any fire in your, in your habitations on the Sabbath day. Nehemiah chapter 10 verse 31. And if the people of the land bring wood or any victuals on the Sabbath day to sell, that we would not buy it of them on the Sabbath. So that's explaining that we are not to buy and sell either on the Sabbath day. Or on the holy day. And that we will leave the seventh year and the exaction of every death. Hey, bro. Excuse me. You want to come up here for a second? You have any questions? No. Not really? You sure? You know who you are? Yeah. Who are you? I'm an Israelite. I'm afraid. Yes. You understand that there's laws in, in uh, being an Israelite? Yeah. Do you understand that? Okay, uh, let me bring out a law to you, okay? Uh, brother's gonna bring, uh, soldier's gonna bring something out to you. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10, verse 12. And now, Israel. Now, Israel. You said you're an Israelite, right? Where are you at on the sun? You're Judah, right? right bro. Okay, so this pertains to you. Right. Go on. And now, Israel, what does the Lord that God require of thee? What does God want from you? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways. In all his ways, not some, not partial, all his ways. And to love him. And that's how you love God, right? And to serve 
the Lord thy God with all, with all thy heart and with all thy soul to keep the commandments of the Lord. You understand that? So if you love God, you ought to keep his commandments, right? Then you keep his commandments. No. Do you? Okay, what is the day? Yeah, what is the day? What is the day according to the scripture? Oh, yeah. You got a moment? You got a moment, sis? You got a moment? No, I'm on with work. All right. Hey, you want to pass it? Let me ask you a question. Did you know that there's a, a law about facial hair? Last night? Okay. Let me ask you a question. Did you, did you cut into it? You do? Okay, let me bring it out and let me explain to you. And that's the sin. The book of Leviticus, chapter 21, verse 5. They shall not make bargains upon their heads. They are his children, 12 tribes, right? Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. All right. You understand that? And you said that you love God, right? And that you keep his commandments, right? Well, now you just understand that that commandment, that one commandment, you're not keeping it. Okay, so in order to keep that commandment, what, what must you do? Huh? Okay, you're not cutting in the corners of it, right? You're not trimming it. He got. He looked like he got a pretty. Okay, I can't really see from here. Okay, go crazy. Go crazy. Okay. The book of First Corinthians, chapter eleven, verse verse three. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. You understand that? We're going about the order of the Most High God. It's written in the Bible, always written in. Okay? So. And the head of the woman is the man. Let's start going. Verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of, the, of every man is Christ. The head of every man is our Lord Jesus Christ, right? Born. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of all women is the man, right? Okay. And the head of Christ is God. Who is the head of Christ? God, okay. Verse 4. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. So, what's happening right now? That's another law. He said it. Verse 4. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. So, when, when the scriptures are coming out, what you should do? to that ball. Should your head be covered or uncovered? Right. So, right, sir. So, what, what should you do according to that, that law? Well, well, you understand that your head is covered right now? Yeah, your hoodie, your hoodie is on. Yeah, well, Lord understands that's a little chill. Oh, he understands? Yeah, okay, let me get out. You said you know God, you said you love him and you keep his commandments, right? Okay. The book of First John, chapter 2, verse 3. And hereby we do know that we know him. You said you know him, right? You said you know him, right? This is who knows him. If we keep his commandments. Okay, so go into that scripture. You know God if you keep his commandments. All his commandments. You don't pick and choose which ones. You understand? We can, yeah, yeah. Let's stick with what we just brought up. Why, why are you, why are you cutting? Why are you trying to cut what that scripture says? Let's go on. Let's go on. Let's go on. He that said, I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar. You see, God says you're a liar. God says you're a liar. Let's read it again. He that said, I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar. Did he say, keep my commandments, but if it's a little chilly, he understands that I can keep my hood on. Did he say that? You came up with your own understanding. You don't have no understanding of the scriptures. And the truth is not in him. And the truth, the Lord is not in you. Well, hey, you can take that off. It's not a hard thing to do. This is the love of God. You got you to prove to God that you love him. Yes, yes, sir. It's a, if it's a law and it's being kept, you are showing God that you love him. Hey, can you do 
proved up. Are you proving something to me, or you need to prove that to the Heavenly Father? Right. I don't need to prove nothing to him because he know it all. Okay. He does know. He does know. And you're showing him what you're showing him exactly who you are. Yeah. You re you're rebelling against him. That's right. Right. Yeah, he knows. You're rebelling against him. That's why we're out here to teach our people their sins. Bring it up. You are rebelling against him. And, and, and that's why destruction is coming. God is not okay with sin. God hates sin. You understand that? Bring it up. Our people don't want to follow the Heavenly Father. We just don't want to. Why not? So you saw the man must not wear a covering over his head at any time? Get that ball. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Is Christ the head of every man? And the head of the woman is the man. Right. And the head of Christ is God. All right. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoring his head. So you understand what you're doing? Okay. What you're choosing to do because you heard the law. Yeah. Now, when you hear the law, you have a decision to make. You Either you're going to follow it, or you're going to bend it to your own desire. That's right. I'm not doing this. So, 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 brother, basically what, 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 what we are here to do, we're going to bring out the scripture. The book of 2 Timothy, chapter 4, verse 2. Bring it out. Preach the word. Sir, what are we doing? Your pastor, have he ever told you this, what we're telling you? Good. Okay. Well, hey. Preach that again. Preach the word. Preach the word. That's what the most high. That's why we out here. We're gonna preach the word. We ain't out here about you know, we ain't worried about nobody's feelings, how they feel, if they get mad and get sad. We out here showing love to our people. We read. Be instant in season. You gotta be instant. Go ahead, read. Out of season. We prove. Reprove. That's what we are here. We're reproving our people. Okay. If nobody else does it, that's what we're doing. Okay. Right. If nobody does it for us. You see what I'm saying? But as we learn better, we do better. Right. So that's what we're trying to put that spirit on you. Right. According to the word of God. Okay. That's what we're doing. No, I'm just Review. Okay. Re review. Because sometimes we come out here, we have to rebuke our people. Right. You, you got a son, a daughter, you got any kids? Oh, right. We, right. You rebuke. That's what we do. Okay. Your pastors ain't gonna do what we do. Why? Because they, they worry about that money. Right. Right. So we 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 out here, we come out here and show ourselves as men for the most high God. Okay? So what you got? Exhort with all on suffering and dust. Okay, I'll pray. So that's what the soldier was bringing out to you. You said, you know, our people don't know that. Go back to what you were uh, reading about the covering of the head. This, this, this is a commandment that was given to us, okay? Because we can be out here, you know, hooded up, you know, to bond us on everything too. So when we see sin, we deal with sin. That's how we work out here. That's how it works. That's now, whether you hear or forbear, you know, that's, 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 that blood is off my hand. You see what I'm saying? We, we got to prove, we got to rebuke. That's what we're going to do, okay? First Corinthians chapter 11. Verse 3. So, in the word of the Lord, this is what the word of God says. Bring it out. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man. You understand that, right? All right, you know. And the head of Christ is God. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. So you dishonor Christ. That's what we're telling you. With your head covered, that's what you're doing. You're just all in Christ. All right? That's the point we're making. You know? But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head. For that is even, for that is even all one as if she were shaken. And, and that sounds good. But the word of God with prophecy is coming out. That's, that's not, not that you prophesy. No, not that you prophesy. Yeah, we yeah, we are prophesying, but you're a part of the prophecy that's coming out. Right. You know what I'm saying? But it still pertains to you too. That's you know right. See that's 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 one of one of our people's biggest problems. You know, we we, we want to rebel. You know, we get instructions, you know, we find a way to try to get out of it. Right. But we all subject to this. So that's what got us ass got our ass to sleep. That's what we told. 
I disobey we are rebellious and the stiff neck people. That's what's that's our problem. The blacks are spending their merit. That's exactly why we came over in slavery. Most God, most high God, punish us. I'm listening. Remote the saw remote the saw the face of God. And his face omitted like the sun. What he put over his head? Talking about Moses? Moses. When he saw the face of God, and his face was shining like the sun, what did he put over his head? Oh. A veil. Moses bared bear, bear himself bear for the people. Yeah. Right, that was for the people. But he went. When he talked to the people, he bared his face for the people. He, he didn't cover his head, sir. A veil? A veil over your whole head. Say his face shines when he's talking about his face. Yeah, his face. Okay. So he wore a veil over his but, but face. Also, too. Also, too. Okay. Say, say, say you're right. Let's just say you're right. In the law of Moses, that was sure enough. That's where it was. But now, when Christ comes and we have, have that grace, this is what we're, we're commanded to do. Yeah. Okay? So that's that's what we're bringing out. All right? In Moses' time, be honest with you, your ass probably been put to death. Do you, uh, you know what I'm saying? If we were sin, let's be real about it. If we sin, we'd be put to death. No, we'd be put to death. Because for what? Y'all only say what you say things that you want to say. You don't even want to listen to the people. You try to reach the people, how you gonna reach the people and you don't want to listen to the people? What say? How you gonna reach the people and you don't want to listen to the people? We hear the but we're gonna hear the word of God. That's, that, that's what I'm saying. Our, even our words don't mean nothing. We're gonna hear this word of God. If you know we hear your question, you ask your question, didn't you? Hey, I heard your question. You said, how are we gonna reach the people? How how are we gonna how are we gonna reach the people if we don't listen to the people? Right. We've listened to you for over 400 years. Right. The last 60 years we listened to the nonsense marching, the chants, the uh, I am man, hands up, right. don't shoot. We listen to all that dumb. For over 60 years alone, right. we're tired of hearing nonsense. Right. We want to hear the words of the Most High God. If you ain't talking the words of God, shut your damn mouth and listen. That's right. If you are not speaking the words of the Most High God, shut your damn mouth and listen. Right. We're tired of hearing your nonsense because you're talking fame babbling. You're talking garbage. Right. You are talking nonsense. Shut the door. Can I have that? Like a if you are not coming out of the Bible, I do not want to hear you. That's right. Your thoughts don't matter to me. Right. God's thoughts matter to me. God's opinion matters. Where they come from? My opinion don't matter. God's opinion matters. Read it to the white people. Huh? Read it to them. I'm reading it to you. To how with the white people? I'm reading it to you. Yeah, how white people? Look. Ain't no such thing as white people. That's right. Ain't no such thing as white people. They're red and hate. Red, Okay? They're in white. We're not dealing with white people. I don't give a damn about them. I care, I care about you. Why? I care about my brother. I care about my sister. My father. My mother. My people. Right? I care about you as a light. And these other nations. And my thoughts are the same thoughts that God has. Right. Because that's my father. Yes, sir. Preach. So to hell with your vain thoughts. Wait. Bring it up. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Come on. Beware that any man spoil you through philosophy. Through what? Philosophy. So they teach you philosophy in this society. If you don't learn that philosophy, you can't get an education. Right. You can't get a degree if you don't learn that philosophy. Come right. on. And vain deceit. And vain what? And vain deceit. They tell you the big pain theory happened. That's a damn theory. Right. They tell you all this madness, and you believe it. Right. And you tell me you quote that garbage to the middle of the most high God. You out your damn mind. Right. You out your mind thinking you're standing for me quote nonsense. Save it. Right. Keep thy foot when you come into the house of God. That's right. I don't want to that madness. As you puff your cigarette, you're going to give me some quotes about stuff that you miss quoting in the Bible. Bring it you out. are out your damn mind. Proverbs 24 7. The book of Proverbs 24. I'm talking about you and all of our people. Bring it you out. and all of our people. See, that's the problem. They always think about themselves. Well, the white, man. Me, son. The white man your business. It's just about me, son. The white man in your business. And I'm going to do me. The it's about you and all of us. You can we got to get out of here too, dead dog. You can't do it for Dolo. No we got to get out of here together. Right. So that means you got to get the commandments just like we do. Let me say something. Read what you got. 
the book of Proverbs. I told you, I just told you, I don't want to hear your nonsense. We listened to you yesterday. Frank, chapter 24, verse 7. Come on. Wisdom is too high for a fool. Wisdom is too high for a fool. God's wisdom is too high for a fool. Come on. He, he opens not his mouth in the gate. Come on. He that devises to do evil shall be called a mischievous person. The, verse 9. The thought of foolishness is sin. The thought of foolishness. If you think about vain, foolish thoughts, if you think about anything outside of this Bible, that's sin. Foolish thoughts are sin. I'm trying to, you asked me yesterday why I won't let you continue on and ask your question. You know what I told you? I said I'm trying to save your life. Because I understand the thoughts of foolish questions is sin. Read it again. Verse 9. The thought of foolish a foolishness is sin. Read it again. The thought of foolishness is sin. So the thought of foolishness is sin. So we try to stop you from sinning, correct you, show you, listen, it doesn't mean that. It don't mean what you think it means. Let's, let us show you the proper precepts so you can have a better and clear understanding of what God is trying to tell you. I'm Eldon Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets out. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.